And just like that, we are back. We are here with Sharp. How you doing, buddy? First time on stream I'm, for the season. I'm doing good. I'm very anxious awaiting this first match, though. Yep. For the record, for those uh, at home, uh, we are having some minor tech issues. We'll get started here within, I think, about five minutes or so. We just heard a little bit ago that one of the players is having some issues. So give it about five minutes. We'll be good to go. Sharp, that gives us time to talk about your predictions, though, since we haven't really had a chance. Oh, yeah. It wouldn't be a proper stream, though, if we didn't have a little delay at the start. You know, I agree. It's, for first game back, new season, it, it wouldn't it wouldn't be right if we just jumped right in. We got to. We, we got to get the anticipation up, you know? I agree. I agree. All right, Sharp. Hit me with them predictions. Who's your top eight? Top eight. Okay, so first, the overall consensus. I, I agree with most. I got Columbia Navy, St. Clair Green, Rochester University. However, I do in the Swiss. I have, I have St. Clair Green and Columbia Navy as my two three O's. I think, I think St. Really? Clair... Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm excited to watch that St. Clair roster. Even though Rochester's coming back, they have they have the chemistry. St. Clair's a little a little newer, but I almost it's I have to back the Canadian team. It's it's in my blood okay. to back the Canadian I, I boys. I understand where we're going here. So that's I, I was I was debating and and the Canadian gives it the edge. And then okay. I got Columbia Silver, Oakland University, Davenport, Siena Heights, and Kansas Blue are, are my top eight making it out of the Swiss with some honorable mentions to Purdue Gold, Columbia White, and St. Clair Orange. But yeah, that's why, that's why I got making it to playoffs and then making it all the way again in playoffs. I think St. Clair is going to make it to the final. They're back the, back the boys in red and white. And then I think Columbia Navy's taking it all. I don't think I don't think you can combat the experience that they have. That's fair. That's fair. It is very hard right now to bet against Columbia Navy. A certain someone I know who's not on the stream right now um, is actually going against that and going with uh, some people we may know a little better. He's not the only one. I'll give I'll give him credit. Uh, I'm I'm looking at him right now on my side screen. You guys can't see him. He's smiling at me right now. Um, he's not the only one who has uh, picked against Columbia Navy. I'll leave that uh, cliffhanger for later. So yeah, between Siena Heights, between Purdue, what are your thoughts? I again, I agree with the consensus. I think it'll be a little closer than than the panel. So I got, I, I agreed with you. I got the three two to Purdue, or sorry, to Siena Heights. So Siena Heights winning, but I think Purdue can get two games because one thing that. Purdue team consistently brings is is they they go down swinging if they're ever going to go down. So I think I think the experience coming from Siena Heights is going to win. Um, they have both teams are playing with a new player, so that's going to be very interesting to see how that merges together. But yeah, I think Siena Heights has it, but Purdue is not going to give it to them in an easy fashion. I think they're I think Siena's going to have to work for this one. Okay, this is the first real test. I don't follow Siena Heights too too much outside of. Uh, what they do with Indiana Tech. Um, but to me, this is their first real test, if you will. This is the first team I've really seen them play that could be closer to that level. Um, and it, it'll it'll be interesting to see how the Siena Heights roster does. Because again, it's a new roster compared to what we saw last year. And Sharp, I don't believe you were here last year by the time they had left, correct? I don't believe so, no. Okay. So they had uh, Faded in place of um, Corrupt and Benbo. Um, Faded is a CRL player as well. That whole roster made it to CRL. Okay. Faded is no longer, I think he is still with the school, but he's not on the roster today, if that makes sense. So yeah. um, Corrupt and Benbo are the guys. Um, I'm interested. I'm excited to see what this roster can do up at the higher level. Um, let's do it. I mean, yeah, I think this this game I think is going to be one of the more important ones to get set off on the right foot, especially with the the amount of talent that we have throughout all these teams. Going down 0-1 in a Swiss is definitely not a good feeling. Easily recoverable. A lot of teams can make it back from going down 0-1, but that is definitely not how you want to start. So I think both of these teams they're they're going to be putting their strongest foot forward to come out of the gate and then hopefully give them a slightly more manageable rest of the Swiss. And again, for those who are just joining us waiting, you know, where's Siena Heights Purdue? 
We're having some tech issues. They're working it out right now. I can see the chat on the side of my screen. They are working on it. We're getting things figured out. So we'll be, we'll get going here in just a few minutes. Um, until then, we're just kind of, we're, we're talking it out. We're figuring it out. So um, are there any other games, uh, Sharp, that you're looking at around the rest of the bracket that you're like, hey, that'd be an interesting one to pay attention to? Um, so the closest games that I have, at least first round switch, is, first round first rounded Swiss, is that Davenport for St. Clair Orange. I, I'm very curious to see how that the the St. Clair second team is going to play, how they're going to mesh together, and also Davenport because I I haven't seen too much of Davenport, but the consensus that I'm hearing is that they're generally a a pretty consistent university, and hence I have them in my top eight. I again back the red and white i have the my my boys in st Clair coming up three two but that's the that's the closest i have in my first round swiss most of the other ones i feel like first round they seem to be at least to me pretty pretty cut and dry uh with most of the the higher teams should be able to get out of their first swiss but again because of how talented the pool we have this year we I, like all of our predictions are exactly their predictions these could most of these could go either way all right. Well, I have good news, Sharp. The teams are here. I think we are ready to go. Are you ready to go? I am. I, I was ready 10 minutes ago, so let's get into this. Are the viewers ready at home? I'm not going to wait forever for you guys. You guys better be ready because we're about ready to get going here for game one of the brand new season two in Great Lakes CRL. I think we have everyone here. It looks like Ben, Eleven, and Bob are going to get going for Sienna Heights. Uh, do we have some issues? Oh. We might have some issues. I see players flickering around. Someone on the side What's of Sienna going on Heights. Here? We might have some issues. Oh, are we good? We're wiping off the cobwebs. Sorry, guys. We are ready to go. Sit back, relax, and enjoy game one between Sienna Heights and Purdue Gold. As 11 and Enchanted off the kickoff, Duck will push it down into the corner. Looks to wrap it around Ben. Bounces back out in front. Bob will clear back the other way. No boost in the tank. Looks just to go for the 50-50 with Enchanted. It kicks out to the middle. 4-11 as it gets up over the top of him. Ben is there up the right side wall. Drops it down. Looked like a swing and a miss. Bob is there to recover. Pops it up. 11 off the backboard. will send it downfield. Plane off the clear out to midfield. Now towards the middle. Looking for Enchanted. And Purdue strikes first. It is 1-0. Oh, well, wow. that was a very intense attack coming right out of the gate which is exactly what I expected coming out of Purdue, to be honest. They are one of the more aggressive teams. So Siena Heights, if they are if they want to fight back, they're definitely going to need to be seeing more of the orange side of the field because if you let Purdue just keep attacking and attacking, that's it's an inevitable outcome right there. Just like that, Purdue strikes first blood. The flick from 11 looking for Ben, cut down in midfield by Enchanted. I think he's got a flip reset, can't use it as Bob goes back the other way. A quick start. Here in game one, playing face underneath, has to get through 11, but it's cut away there. Ben will drop this one back for Bob. One touch looks to go to the air, cut down quickly by Enchanted. Sharp, the first thing I'm noticing is aggression early and aggression often from Purdue. Oh yeah, it, I, I don't know if it's it's nerves, but it's, oh, oh there's one from Bob. That's all it takes, just get Purdue back into their back half, and then that's when they're gonna see some of the, the mistakes come out. That was a very good 50 by 11, and Purdue players just couldn't rotate back in time, so Bob got as easy as a goal as I think you're gonna see in this series. Just like that, we are back to even footing. Bob and Duck off the kickoff, Bob through playing on the 50-50 as well. And Janet up in the air, playing off his own backboard, pops it out, 11 is there into the corner. This one will drop back out in front for Ben, and the Great Lakes rookie has struck his first goal of the season. Sienna Heights with a 2-1 lead. That was a, a very awkward... Uh, Purdue was in a much more awkward position than they should have been coming off some of those touches. It must have been a miscommunication on the back line because they didn't seem to be in position or ready for that ball to go all the way through. As you saw, Blue was stuck having to hit reverse on his goal line, which is never a good try. That was almost a very good connection mid as Bob tries to take it back, but it's cut off up on the wall. Low boost on the ball. Interesting touch out to 11. 11's going to bang it off the wall and Enchanted's going to try for the clear, but Bob's just going to send it right back. Lane off the corner, drops down dangerously in front. Ben looking for the low shot, Enchanted off the backboard, sticks with it. Up over 11, looking to keep going. Through Bob, up towards the net, Ben is there. Sienna Heights clears back the other way. Duck one touch, it's gonna be taken back by Sienna Heights. The aggression 
looking like it's fading a little bit here for Purdue. Enchanted to the middle for playing and Ben diving across the goal line makes a good save. Sienna Heights dodged the bullet on a very interesting double uh -oh. coming out of the SMS by Enchanted. What a recovery to make it back on that ball though. Payton with the touch out, out to Enchanted. It seems like Purdue, after that first 30 or so seconds, they're, they're getting a lot more unforced touches away from them. I'd really like to see a little bit more passing from them throughout the midfield. Shannon will wrap this one around. Ben out to the middle. No one there for Sienna Heights, so Duck has some time. Off the sidewall, cut away by Bob. Plane will have to half flip. He's awkward. The demo comes out, and Bob drops it back down in front. Looks to do it himself. Enchanted is there. Ben for Sienna Heights removed from the field. And now Eleven splits it up over one. Duck from his own corner in reverse. Eleven keeps it there. Duck will move it further. Bob will pop it up. Plane is up as well. One touch to the side. Eleven is there, so is Enchanted as he gets it up over his counterpart. And Ben from his own backfield. Booms it up, looks to go for the second touch. Duck cuts it down. Bob will stay with it, gonna take his time. Looks to go through one, does, across the goal mouth, playing up for it. Gets it out to midfield, and now it feels like Sienna Heights starting to settle in, Sharp. They can't, uh, Purdue can't get out. Yeah, Sienna Heights is making this Purdue team into a lot of uncomfortable situations. And it seems like they're also getting quite Nice control of the boost. However, I said that Duck gets the clear all the way down the field, making 11 back up. Bad touch by 11 out to the middle, and there's a goal bump from Enchanted. That is an amazing pass by, I believe, Payne playing to get that into the middle of an unfortunate touch by 11. And Bob and Ben were just so pushed up coming off of that attack of pressure that they just could not get back in time. So we are tied at two, and again, I said something, and Purdue came right back the other way to go against what I said. You thought I would have learned last year to keep my mouth shut. No, that's part of my job. Ben up the sidewall. Around one towards the backboard. Enchanted is there. Bob will hold on to it. Pops it towards the middle looking for 11, but duck with the clear. 11's too far. Purdue's got the lead. It looks like right now Sienna Heights, their, their greatest strength is also turning out to be their greatest weakness as they're, they're trying to put this suffocating pressure onto Purdue, but Purdue, as of now, they're staying calm and collected, and they're just getting these clears, and at that time, 11, I guess he thought a softer touch was coming, or maybe he thought Bob was going to be back by then, but he, he pushed up a little too close on the fake challenge. With Enchanted getting the clear to the side, Bob has a free shot. Very good pre-jump, though, by Duck. However, they do have the boost control, as Purdue's going to want to get this out of the zone while they can, as they do not have that much boost stuck with the hit off their own ceiling ben beats and chances the ball i don't think anybody will be back another goal i don't know this is at this rate we're gonna have a very high scoring game bug i think early season jitters and wiping off the cobwebs is happening right now sharp both teams are getting gifts both teams are capitalizing on the gifts as the season goes along hopefully as the day goes along you see less and less of these mistakes because you know the higher up we get here sharp you're going to get punished for things we're not even seeing right now. Oh, yeah. It seems like a lot of the, the errors are coming on a either communication or a rotation front where they seem to get a touch thinking that their teammate's going to be in a, in a position to hit, but just nobody ends up being there. Although Bob has some free time going for the boost. And Chanty is going to demo him off the field. A very good shot up to by Duck. A double commit on the save, but it does the job. Playing with the beat mid. Enchanted, he has some boost to work with, but Bob is going to clear it all the way down over the top. And Duck is going to instantly turn, try to see Enchanted. Redirect probably not exactly where he wanted, as Eleven is going to try to take it out of the zone. Although Purdue seems to be very quickly rotating without getting boost to keep this pressure onto the Dana Heights side. Plane's got it off the sidewall right now. They do have Sienna Heights pinned in. 10 seconds, the first countdown begins. Do commit for Sienna Heights for the clear. Enchanted force the recoil. To the left, looking for some help. He's got Duck. Duck looking to leave it up for Plane. Ben will challenge. Plane one touch. Is Duck there? He buzzer beater. Purdue takes game one. That is the perfect ending that we could have asked for for the first game back on the stream. That is Purdue, it, I don't know, it looks like Sienna Heights, they were panicking quite a lot there at the end. A lot of double commits coming out of the defense. So I don't know, maybe they just have to take a quick breather to get that communication back on track because they have all of the, the mechanics and the skills to not be doing that, to trust their teammates. But I don't know if it's a lack of trust or a lack of communication, but defensively, they've really got to figure out their, their double committing shift towards Forbidden Temple, I just want to point out that Enchanted had seven, seven saves. That is unbelievable. It's just, 
You kidding me? Like, would not yeah, be was... would not be denied. Would not be denied. Oh Look no, at this that shot was from Siena Heights. It seems like both both teams defensively were overall there, except when there was a misrotation and there was nobody back. I feel like five or six of those seven goals came off relatively open nets, especially for the the level that we're seeing. We didn't see too much mechanics or or even passing coming out this game. So if if the teams, whichever team can clean up their the rotation communication first, I think is going to be the team that comes out on top. But I'm not surprised whatsoever that Purdue Gold came out swinging. Exactly what I thought. However, I think Sienna Heights is going to be able to bounce back on this one. They took their time to collect and they're ready to go again. Well, I think two thirds of our opening panel said Purdue loses in four. They can't win another one for them to be right. Sit back and enjoy game two between Sienna Heights and Purdue Gold. As Enchanted up the right side wall off the ceiling going across for Plane. He'll just dink it into the corner. Elevens will watch this one for Bob. He'll wrap it back around and back we go the other way. Bob looking for a control and flick. Doesn't get a good one, but it's over Doug. Now 11 through Enchanted to the backboard, looking for two, playing 50s at back out towards midfield. Bob looking to the middle, just towards net. Enchanted, Ben will cut it down. Another shot from Bob, not enough there from Doug. And Sienna Heights gets the first one early. It's one nothing. Again, they're just taking turns, just putting on periods of suffocating pressure against one another, which is, it's not something that you normally see. Normally when it comes to pressure, there's one team that's that's standing out and they're able to maintain this pressure, but they're going extremely back and forth. As I said, that Ben is tr trying to attack the net, no boost, so he's looking for a good 50. Bob hits it back to 11, who wins the 50 into the corner of the Purdue side. Ben, with no boost, recenters it to 11, although I don't think he had enough boost to get up to that. Looks like nobody on the Sienna Heights team has any boost, but they are still pushing up. So we're gonna see Enchanted with the Musty all the way down the field, trying to capitalize on the lack of boost on the Sienna Heights side. But Bob, again, going up with no boost to work with here, he's gonna slowly fall to the ground. This plane can get the clear. Back to 11. 11 looking for the ground pitch. Duck saves him. That is another, it looks like three players forward from Sienna Heights. So Duck gets the free flip onto the ball. 11 sends it all the way back. Plane is the last one back, so he has to play a good 50. 11 gets the pass down, but there's an amazing bump from Duck to clear some of that pressure. How Purdue looks to control. It looks like as we go along here, Sharp, that Purdue's confidence after that first game significantly increased after game one. Duck will keep it here and gets beyond him. Bob back the other way. Looking to go on target, delayed flick, and Chana gets it. Duck put, pops it a little bit further. A little dangerous though. Ben looking down for Bob. Weak touches coming out from Sienna Heights. Ben just on target. Plane's been bumped out. 11 is there. They've doubled up. It's 2 0 Sienna Heights. Again, and this Sienna Heights team, they can make nothing, like something out of nothing. They just keep putting Purdue in the weirdest possible positions, getting some like not even demos, but just uncomfortable bumps to put them out of rotation. And then they're able to capitalize as they do have a very tight rotation is what they're playing. So if Purdue wants to get back to this game, they're going to have to try to capitalize on this extra. Oh, oh my no. God, what? A Unfortunate touch from, I believe, Bob, as Enchanted was just in the corner, I think, looking for some boost. I need to see what happened here again. You were talking I... about Awkward Sharp? <laughs> yeah, I don't know why. how to explain that one. Awkward. Easy. Bob? The lead's been cut in half. It is now 2-1 Sienna Heights. Ben and Enchanted off the kickoff towards the near side. Ducks the first one there for Purdue. Air dribble looking for the bump. He gets through a bunch. It's just going to go. Suddenly, we're tied at two off an air dribble bump from Duck that he didn't get the bump off of. What, in the last 20 seconds, like what just happened? My, I can't process what I just watched and how this game is suddenly back to 2-2 off of what are two goals that, in my opinion, should never have had a threatening chance on the net, especially with three players from Sienna Heights back and on the goal line. But with that being said, Bob is trying to bring it back to the game with a nice flip reset. Purdue is awkward again. And there's another goal from 11, as Purdue just seems to be in a very awkward place defensively. Just like that, no problem. Lead restored as 11 gets his second bar down. 2.50 to go. It looks like we are going to see a high-scoring series here, Sharp. Uh, all of these goals are... They're not ones that you would expect, especially out of these two rosters with the mechanics that I know that they both have. I All of the goals, I think, in this series have been touch-ins or ba they bounced in from within the the goal line 
So I, I'm hoping that, that a, a few more mechanics come out here through the rest of the game and these teams can get their communication. Bob with a very high shot over that, giving a chance in some space. Eleven is going to cut it off, but it's going to go all the way up to the backboard. Duck fakes the challenge and recomposes on the wall with a good 50 to Ben. Another 50 between Plane and Chansey is going to send as the last one back. Luckily, he was able to get a touch on that to give his teammates some time to get back, but Purdue is still a little late getting back. Bob with the demo, that's not going to help the case. Ben is going to hit it off the wall. Plane just wants to get it out of there. Eleven will keep hounding in the corner before Enchanted clears. Bob watches from his own corner. Cut out by Enchanted, it's just a little high, but Eleven clears out to the side. Ben and Duck is there, Duck wins that battle. Couldn't win the battle against Eleven. Plane one touch, looks like it's all he has. Bob will follow for Sienna Heights. Up over Enchanted, Eleven towards the net, and a bar down shot. There's a hat trick from Eleven, and it's four to Sienna Heights. It looks like a yeah, unfortunate touch from Plane followed by a backflip from Enchanted just didn't give Duck enough time to get all the way back. But it's all these goals coming on, all six of these goals in this game were all preventable. So it's it's, it's really going to depend on what defense can get there. There you can say Duck's in order <laughs> as Duck takes the air dribble all the way to the backboard. No, I'm going to stop you there. Back. I'm used to JTV. Hold on a second. Ben wants me to stop. I'm used to JTV giving me the bad puns. Don't tell me you're starting. <laughs> it, the opportunity presented itself. You can never deny that. Uh, As, <laughs> it's 50 in the corner. Ben Whitson who's trying to get a pass down. Duck gets the touch. But there's only one player from Sienna Heights okay, back. Yeah. Duck was ready for the back pass. Bob is low boost. He's going to see what he can do to get control. He's a little bit of space. He's enchanted in 11. Go up for the 50. Ben is going to bang to 11 for a good shot opportunity, but just high and wide. As Ben puts a weak shot on net leaving Bob in an unfortunate position if the bump can go through, but it doesn't, with Duck scrambling back to the wall, instantly challenged by Bob, who's going to look for a pass middle. Bob will boom this one out towards midfield. Ben will follow up off the near post. It bounces off the backboard. And Janet is up too committed from that, by the way, for Purdue. 11 from the corner. It looks like Sienna Heights settling the game down a little bit more. Plane will move it downfield. Bob is there. One touch in midfield. 11 to quick follow keeps it there. Duck from his own bet from almost his own goal mount to ticks it to the side for playing. He'll control, tries to flick it up over Bob, who didn't even move on the challenge. And now Enchanted back out in the slot for Duck. It's turned away by 11. Enchanted, no boost the tank, couldn't find playing. He'll force to recoil. Bob will flick it up over him. Ben, the net is open, and it's five to Sienna Heights, and we will see a game four, it looks like. That one you can't even blame on Purdue. They played an extra aggressive style because they're down by two with 15 seconds left. What else are you going to do? So they they sent their they sent everything at them, turned on low boost, and Shanty just didn't have enough to make contact with the ball as Plane was, was banking on the fact that he was going to. So this game with 10 seconds left, looks like this will be the concluding score. And I don't, I don't know how we should, how to even decipher what we witnessed throughout this game. It seems like a lot of interesting goals in the sense of Purdue just either being very awkward or Sienna Heights just having some very unfortunate mistouches or miscommunications. What do you think going through to this next next game? Who do you think is going to bring it back, let's say? Um, I still think this series belongs to Sienna Heights. I think they're starting to tighten up a little bit, and I think things are starting to look a little better. I still think five. I still think Sienna Heights in five. I'm going to stand by my original prediction here, but... If, yeah, if this I, I next game goes that. to Purdue by the same or similar scoreline, it's hard to it's hard to say otherwise. It's very hard to say otherwise. And the, it, it's a weird game to break down because it, it looked like at least pressure. -wise, Sienna Heights definitely had the pressure, but there was nothing too special coming from either side. So Purdue can very easily bounce back from this. They just need to, for one, start dodging a few of those cheeky little bumps that Sienna Height keeps going for. I noticed throughout the game, they kept going for, it wasn't even demos, but they kept trying to bump their players slightly out of rotation. So Purdue just needs to look for those quick counterattacks that they had in the first game. And then if they can get those, I think that game three could go the way of Purdue if they can figure out what's going on on their own goal line. Well, as we enter DFH Stadium here for game three, again, I have to agree with you. If, if, if this series, if this next game goes uh, the way that it did in game two, it's very, very hard to bet against Sienna Heights at this point. Here is Ben off the kickoff. 
Duck is there. He'll move it downfield. Bob one touch will keep. Looks for 11 to follow through. Plane fights it off. Ben, the quick follow through. Bob sweeping for the bump, but he's too late. And Enchanted will send it back the other way. Counterattack from Purdue. Duck to the backboard. Enchanted for the double. The delayed touch gets there, and Purdue strikes first. See, this is exactly what I was talking about, the quick counterattacks. As Siena Heights, they sent two people on that last drive to bump the goalie out of the net, which it, it, when it works, it works, but when it doesn't, there's a quite a high probability that that ball is going to go right back into your net. Although Enchanted had the interesting double tap, but if it's in the net, it's in the net. It doesn't matter how pretty it looks. With a touch all the way up to the sky, a 50 sending 11 to the ball, Bob, not sure what his boost is looking like. Duck hits it off the wall rather unfortunately, allowing Siena Heights to get the clear right over Enchanted's head. And it is hit back into the center. Luckily, no one from Siena Heights was there to collect. But now 11 has full boost, and he's looking for a very good 50 all the way out to Duck and Bob. Duck beats him on the touch, but that gives Ben space to get a touch. However, again, Siena Heights, all three of their players keep pushing past the midfield. So either they're going to get a goal here soon, or I think they're going to concede. Or I'm sticking in the Purdue backfield. We've crossed a minute without having like three goals scored. Duck might have something to say about that. So progress is being made when it comes to the goals being scored. Both players miss here for Siena Heights. Duck just hits it into the side. That allows Bob to follow through. He's got Ben in the middle. Gonna try and find him. Enchanted intercepts. And then Ben is deleted. Enchanted booms it down. Field 11 circles back. And he'll send it to the sidewall. Enchanted watches off the ceiling. Looking for another touch over one. Ben is there, he beats one. Duck following through from over his back, over his head rather, makes the save, keeps the lead at one. Enchanted with some space, up over Ben. He's got Bob up, he can't get there. Playing now off the sidewall, looks to drop it down. Can't really do much with it, now 11 into the air. Looking for a touch over Duck, he's got it. Enchanted with the follow through, everyone misses from Purdue. Ben turned away by Plane with a diving save. Duck is bumped out of the net. 11 can't get anything going as he pinches it all the way across, and Purdue can take a sigh of relief. I am very surprised that a goal did not end up in the back of the net there. There was quite a few just missed touches off the wall. I think they were quite low on boost, but that's definitely something that Siena Heights would normally capitalize on. Miss Bob there on the attack again. He's carrying on the car. Good 50 from Duck, allowing Plane to come and get the touch, although touched by Ben all the way up to Enchanted as he can't get back to it. Enchanted is going to get back, allow Duck to look for the touch. It's floating in the middle, giving Plane a little bit of space. However, he's a little bit of a hard touch as Bob takes to the corner. Low boost, so he's easily dunked by Enchanted as Ben takes it off his own back wall with boost in the tank to beat Duck, but that is giving Enchanted a free space with boost, so he's going to take take it low. He didn't, felt not, he didn't want to take it high there, I guess. Plane is going to challenge in the corner. Good beat by Bob. Two people. The third one sent from Purdue, but it ended up being a good gamble as they were able to keep it in. But now this is the Siena Heights counterattack. Really good redirect out of Ben, but a better touch from Duck to get it out of harm's way. 11 looks to stay with. Tried to do it himself. Enchanted was the one man back for Purdue. Can't get the pop. Bob off the corner to himself. 50 away there by Duck. Still dangerous here, but Duck's the only one up, and he'll get the clear back the other way. Off the sidewall, Ben will send it once more. 11 off to the side, and Shannon is there as if we begin to enter a somewhat of a ping pong phase. Bob looking for 11 upfield. Can't find him as plane cuts it off. Duck now to the left side, looking for the corner. Two there from Siena Heights, it is Ben. Gets it over Enchanted. 11 is there, looks to just control. He's got Plane to deal with. He gets through him. Duck is up, so is Bob. 50 stays in the Purdue end. Enchanted into the corner. Ben bounces it off the corner out to the middle, but Plane will clear. And Siena Heights, it looks like they're just missing, I guess, that striker in the middle. It's a lot of solo play and a whole lot of not having anyone to finish. Yeah, they have, they have all the pressure that they need, but Purdue is just putting on a very good showing on their defensive back line. Oh with a God. demo coming on the end, it is an open net. He's going to no boost, try to pinch it mid. He does not have a teammate. Oh, no. oh, and he slowly oh, rolls into the net as Plane gets the goal to put them up 2 nothing. with a very good attempt from Siena Heights to keep that out. But Plane, I, I just hit the gym, I guess, earlier today as he room. pushes that weight one room. through. Hit the weight room, Siena Heights. You just got out muscled. It's 2 nothing Purdue with 54 seconds to go. And it looks like we may be headed to game five. Enchanted off the backboard. 11 is there, looks to stay with. And does he, gonna have to, does he have to flip reset? No, it just elects to go underneath. 40 seconds away, it's not over. We've seen crazier happen here. Bob to the middle for Ben, cut down by Plane. 
Bob will look to keep it going. Upfield only as far as Enchanted though, as he'll take to the sky 11 pre-jumps him, and Enchanted still wins that battle. Second touch awkward for Bob, doesn't have the third, and now Ben forced to the side. 30 seconds away sharp from a game five, and Purdue stepped up in a big way here in game four. Yeah, this is where we'll see the desperation commits coming out of Siena Heights, so. So they can get one now, they're still in the game, but it's a cut. Oh, wide open net is a triple commit. It looked like coming out of Purdue. Very, very weird time to be sending your whole team into the front half of the field, winning by two with nine seconds left. This puts Sin Heights back into the game, as I've seen people score with much less time on the clock than nine seconds. We'll see what happens here. 11 in plane, Bob also involved in the kickoff. Enchanted staying back, this is dangerous! We're tied! Enchanted stayed back a little too long. Sienna Heights is never out of it. And we're tied at two with five seconds to go. Sharp, you called it. Four seconds it took them to equalize this game. And as Enchanted, that is one of the, the worst things to read is deciding if you send it or if you try to wait for the shot. And it looks like he stayed in the net, but with one second left, ball's still up in the air. 11 got the touch. Looking threatening as it's placed right on the ground. You know, as I was saying, as enchanted as the defender, you never know if you want to go for that ball to get the early 50 or if you want to wait for the shot. And he looked like he tried to do a little bit of both. He waited and then he went, but then it was able to get an easy chip shot over the head. Duck will look to control this one as it wraps around towards the middle. Purdue needs one more to go to game five. Off the sidewall, enchanted won't go. Duck recoils, turns back. Sends it down. Ben keeps it there. Now back we go with Sienna Heights. Ben towards the backboard. Enchanted is there. Looks to stay with. Bob with the 50. Bounces out into the midfield. And playing will clear. 11. There. Sharp takeover. Uh, just quick correction. This will be going into game three. We're not quite at game five. Getting a, a little excited. With oh my very, goodness. Right. Yeah. Very I long clear coming out of Enchanted. Five. My apologies. Uh, I'm glad well, they put it out. <laughs> Yeah, with Bob, with a very clean beat up to Ben with the touch, Duck could not get the, the double tap, almost coming straight down. Oh, Ben there with a very good 50 right out to Bob as he puts it perfect placement off of the post and in. For some reason in my head, it was already 2-1 Sienna Heights. Now it is, as the comeback is complete for Sienna Heights. One minute into overtime, Sienna Heights has taken the lead and is 2-1 in the series. Yeah, even though originally I predicted this to go to five, after a loss like a loss like that is one of the most de demoralizing ways to lose. And this is going to be a real testament of Purdue Gold's mental strength within this game, which is a very important aspect, but it is very hard to bounce back from a game that you could almost chalk up as a for sure win, winning by two with 10 seconds left. So they're really going to have to to see how strong they are as a unit, if they're able to bounce back from that. But I, I personally think that Sien Heights is gonna be able to carry this momentum and take the next one. I've got some series updates. You ready? Of course. I got four sweeps to report and then a game five. Columbia oh. swept Central Michigan. Rochester yeah. over which said JV in, in three. Columbia Silver swept Columbia White and St. Clair Orange has swept Davenport. Oh. And wow, that's a great result coming out of that team. Your five-game series, Oakland over Wichita State in five. Oh, that one, I had that one as a sweep personally, so I'm, I'm, then I'm excited to see the Wichita State team play if they were able to get Oakland all the way to five. I thought Oakland would have a slightly easier time with that one. But we are getting right back into the next game, game number four. It seems the players are ready on the field. Topia Dusk, is this the one that ends this series? Five minutes on the clock, sit back and enjoy game number four, not five, four, between Sienna Heights and Purdue. As Ben with the ground pinch gets us started early. This whole series, I was talking about getting some exciting mechanical goals there, and that comes off the ceiling and gets the ground pinch that gets just enough height to get over not one, not two, but all three of the Purdue defenders were right in the line of the ball, but it was able to get over all three of them with them only being able to make a small touch. But Enchanted trying to get back, air dribbles through the mid to get cut off by Duck, who takes all the way to the corner. Ben with the good 50, trying to flip back into it, but he won't be able to reach. Plane could have a double tap, but it is 
sets all the way down the field by Levin with a shot opportunity from Ben. However, he misses. Bob resenters it. There's only one goalie back. Unfortunate touch by Levin as he sends a calculated back pass back to Ben. As Bob keeps the pressure into the side with Siena Heights not going away. Been in the air, four boots in the tank. Now it's 0 11. We'll send it, or Enchanted sends it away from 11. Ben to Bob on target, kicked away by Duck. And Enchanted looks to control back the other way. We've seen him pop off before. Flip reset in hand. The rebound missed by Duck. And Plane forced to send it wide. Going to the middle, still has it. Has to beat 11. He won't do that. Duck to the backboard. Bob just waiting patiently underneath. Enchanted commits. Duck demos Ben. 11 clears. Duck is there and Bob forces it out into the corner to slow the counter. Duck will stay with it, couldn't get through 11. Now playing downfield, Enchanted's up with Ben. One touch over him, and Waterfall's down in front, but Bob cuts it off as Sienna Heights looks to stabilize that back line. Finally started to see some threatening pressure coming out of the side of Purdue. As I say that, it goes all the way back into their end with Plant has full boost on the backboard, trying to get it around two. He does, in fact, get it around two, but he is unfortunately out of boost, so it gives a free clear to Bob, which sends it back to Duck, who sends it back to Ben as they're starting their quick little match of ping pong as Ben finally gets a little bit more control with a very good 50 on Duck in the midfield as he's going to look for 11 in the mid. Unfortunate touch straight up gives Plant a chance to get a touch but 11 is there and ready however there is no sienna heights player ready for that amazing center mid although enchanted gets a hard touch off the wall 11 with the miss and there's a demo coming through the midfield purdue is gonna need to try to get this aggression to get the ball out of their side if they want to get back into this game there is ben sticking with it he's got enchanted to deal with in the midfield bob is there two two touches into the corner enchanted over him Purdue running out of time. We're halfway through game four. They're still down one now, down two. It's an own goal coming out and the lead doubled for Siena Heights. I just want to see this. It I don't know, the, maybe communication, but there was no threat of a follow-up shooter coming in from Siena Heights there. It looks like all three of the players were looking for boost. So that is a un very unfortunate way to concede a goal. And just another thing that is going to demoralize this Purdue roster. So. It's, it's going to take a lot of mental to be able to bounce back from this, but if any roster can do it, it is them with the double tap coming in from Duck. As I'm mid-sentence talking about their mental, they bring it back to a one-goal game so they can completely forget the own goal that just happened. Well, they got a double tap on the wrong net and then said, wait a minute, we're playing for orange. Let's do it on the blue net. This time they got it. It does count for the good guys. It is 2-1 Sienna Heights as Ben sends it towards the backboard. He's got boost, gets around playing the soft touch. 11 is there, and the lead restored. It's 3-1. What a 50 on the goal line by 11. He played that perfectly to read the Purdue touch. Or no, he dunked Duck, actually. Duck tried to make the diving save, but 11 was just in the right spot as they give themselves another two goal lead, which is exactly where they want to sit. But as they know, this Purdue team is not going to give up without a good fight with 11 getting a good touch. Unfortunate Rebound. touch by Enchanted and another follow up goal by Bob. That is definitely not the touch that Enchanted was looking for on that one. The floodgates are beginning to open here, Sharp and it's favoring Siena Heights in a big way. The lead is yeah. now three, 2.09 to go. Do you think Purdue has a way to get back in this? I mean, I know you said don't count him out, but the mountain's getting taller. Yeah, I, I said don't count him out one goal ago. That's a, a, another unforced error coming out of Purdue. And at, at this point, being, being a player in those situations, it's that many unforced errors, which you think you should be in a game, but you're actually losing by three very very difficult to bounce back from and this Sienna Heights team does not look like they are slowing down whatsoever as there is a wide open net of a very good pass from 11 to Ben scoring what's another it seems like enchanted he pushed up a little too far and their defense they they do need to be aggressive to score but at what cost because now they have a four goal lead to try a four goal deficit rather to try to come back from in under two minutes 106 seconds to go. Deanna Heights putting this one away, it looks like. Duck to the backboard, 11 off the sidewall. Bob is there, he'll look to stay with, Enchanted. Sends it off the sidewall, gets the double out towards midfield. 90 seconds remain, potentially in the series. 
Duck tries to force it to the mid. He does. Plane is there, but Ben closes the gap. Enchanted off the sidewall. Looking for the double. He's got it. Can he stay with it? Around 11, but Ben will clear it. The net is open. Is it in? No, now it is. As Duck gave up on it, it looks like. It's 6-1, and I think at this point, we can say Sienna Heights is starting their day 1-0. Oh, 100%. Now, now all that I'm looking for is if Sienna Heights can take us to Brazil. That's, I think, what most people watching right now are wondering. Or if Purdue is going to take that last bit of strength that they have left to stop oh, the Brazil. But as I say that, Eleven puts one right in the net off of the kickoff to get to bring us to Brazil. Oh, this, yeah, this, this game could not have gone more out of hand for Purdue than it did. They seem to be right in it as well. And just step by step, a few unforced errors, and then next thing they know, they woke up and they're losing by six. Seven one with a minute to go. We've got our first Brazil of the season. The question is, is will it stand for another sixty seconds? Because I don't. I'm be honest with you, Sharp. I I think Sienna Heights wants more. I think they do. As as a as a player, it's always a, a tough decision on whether or not you want to keep the Brazil just just for fun or if you want to keep piling the score on but it doesn't look like this Sienna Heights team is slowing down they do seem to they're in a, 11 was in an interesting position there I think they're they're trying to hit some more interesting shots now that they're up by six but Purdue wants to try oh, to get that stand. And it, they get it Enchanted takes one on the road even though it doesn't mean much in the greater scheme of things they won't be brazil in the end 30 seconds to go, 32 really. Um, it's over. I don't think there's any questioning that at this point. Um, sure, let's keep it going. 30 seconds left, a five goal deficit. There's no question. This is the, this is one of the two series left to conclude by the way, as every other series has been completed. Uh, St. Clair Green 3-1 over Indiana University. Rochester sweeps Wichita State JV. And I believe that is the last update that I have as Kansas Blue and Michigan Mays are the only other series yet to conclude. And so far, all of the results that, that have come out for the first round are, are what's expected. As the ball hits the ground, giving Siena Heights the win, 3-1 in the series. I can't help but think what could have happened in this series had Purdue kept that two-goal lead with the last nine seconds of that game number three it's unfortunate but it is the reality sienna heights 